Ladies and gentlemen, boys and yeah, welcome to <laughs> welcome to episode eighty, whatever the fuck of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host Lewis Spears, and I'm in a good mood. I've uh, I think I've recovered from the first week of radio. It uh, almost killed Luke and I, but we're back on track. Hang on a second, I should have done this ages ago. I sh- I need to just I got one of these electric. Uh, who the fuck's texting me? <laughs> what a shitty start to the podcast. Hang on, someone's fucking texting me. All right. Um, so, uh, what am I doing? Ah, oh, that's right. I need a... I've got one of these standing desks. And hang on, let me just convert this to standing. We Up it goes. All right. Cool. Because I heard uh, fucking... Hang on, let me stand up now. I heard uh, fucking... Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull say sitting is the new smoking. So I was like, you know what, Prime Minister, you're probably fucking right. I gotta stand up more. So then I got I got this. Ah, oh, now everything's falling off my fucking desk. Anyway, um, I got this standing desk ages ago, and it's it's great. I've been using it a lot. Um, because sitting really fucks you, especially because I'm so tall, man. Like I really, I don't know. I just don't fit in things, so I'm always conscious of my back and my spine because I know being six foot eight now, I'm kind of getting. Like, not, not back problems, but, like, like just, well, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> so, you know, by the time I'm 40, I'm going to be fucked, and I don't even have a manual labor job. I don't even have a real job. I just tell fucking, hang on, I just tell fucking dick jokes. Jeez, you were probably wondering, oh, if Lewis gets a radio show, does this, does this mean he's going to sell out and go all mainstream and professional of us? And then a minute 58 into the Spear Sunday's podcast, I've just adjusted my fucking desk moved all of my shit, I've already said cunt, and i got a text in the middle of it, and I'm about to use my inhaler, so ladies and gentlemen, I think we're fucking fine, <sighs> alright, so, what did I do this week, uh, fucking, actually, quite a few things, I guess, I was gonna say fucking nothing, I did the radio shit, but I talk, I don't want to talk about that right now, um, it's going great, by the way, what did I do, why do I have a light bulb, stop getting distracted, Lewis, <clears throat> I, uh, oh, today I finished off my mixtape, the Christopher Ruse mixtape, I finished it off finally, I went in and I recorded the final three tracks, so that'll be coming out at the end of this year, I'm probably going to put it out um, after I record my special, but before I release it, so maybe the end of November, I'm thinking, yeah, probably the end of November, because December's too late, but the end of November is alright, I just don't want to bombard you guys with too much shit. So that that's good. Um, I'm really proud of the tracks that I've made for that. I think my beat making skills have gotten way better, and also my lyricism and, and just lyric writing. I don't know. I just feel like I'm better. I don't feel like I'm good yet. Like I'm still run- <clears throat> still running with the whole not very good theme, but I think I am a lot better. <clears throat> Fuck. Hang on. I got to pause here. I got something in my throat. All right, and we're back. Really, why this the start of this podcast has been so terrible is um. Because I just haven't been able to do this shit while I was on air. Like, while, while we're on air, live on air with radio. When, geez, when somebody else is paying the bills, you really do have to show up on time. You've got to be a professional. You, you, you know what's really struck me about working in radio is uh, the, the talent. Well, I feel weird calling myself the talent, but that's actually what they call us. They call us the talent. And you know that, they were, that we were never called the talent, right? We were probably called the announcers or the DJs or the or the hosts or just by our names, Lewis, you know? But you know that some fucking up himself cunt came in and was just such an absolute asshole that everyone around him started to refer started to refer to him as the talent, not because it's a good name, but just to spare his ego. And then pretty soon people started re- sarcastically referring to him as the talent. Like, oi, the talent's here. Because <laughs> really, we do fuck all. Luke and I, we come into this office and uh, I've just been absolutely disrespecting the dress code. Because, I'll, you know what, I'll work in an office. I'll work in an office, that's fine. I'll take public transport to work, even though I hate public transport. It's not as bad now. I used to hate public transport so much because I it would freak me out. Like I'd be sitting there on the way to work to my dead end call center job and I would look at someone who's like 40 years old and they would be wearing uh the same kind of clothes as me, like the clothes that cost the same amount, and I would look at them and I would see how unhappy and unsatisfied they were with their life. 
and I would borderline have a panic attack because I'd be like, that's me if comedy doesn't work. What if it doesn't work? What if I'm stuck in this job forever? I've got no skills. Maybe I should go to university. Or maybe at least TAFE. I've got half a certificate three in personal training. Maybe I could do that. <laughs> and I would just freak out all the way there because I'd be like, oh no, what if it doesn't work? And now... Now I catch public transport, and I still hate it, but at the end of the day, uh, it's alright, because at least I'm catching public transport to do some comedy that I'm getting paid for. Getting paid fuck all, mind you, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, but yeah, I, I've just been, I'm, I'm happy to take public transport, I'm happy to work in an office, but I will not adhere to any kind of dress code at all. Uh, it's funny because the all of the other people have it's it's crazy how many people work behind the scenes in radio man there's like when you go into the office there's like 30 it would be like 40 people each floor so there's a triple m floor and then there's a fox fm floor where hamish and andy and all those cunts work and uh and everyone's just like in business attire like there's people walking around in suits people walking around in button-ups and then i walk in wearing literally fucking tracky pants air max a t-shirt and a hat haven't shaved, and I walk in, and I go, hey, what's up, everyone, I'm the fucking towel, and I do whatever I want, <laughs> and I've, I've kind of, uh, and, and it's great, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a really cool job doing this radio shit, and I feel like there's a lot of potential in it, and I'm still getting over how much creative freedom we have, like, I'm just waiting for the fucking meeting where we go, hey, so I want to talk about this and this, and I'm just waiting for them to go, ah, why don't we tone that one down a little bit, oh, you can't really say that, I'm just waiting for it, and it never fucking come. So I'm really, really happy with where we are. I think it's a, I think it's cool. But like I said, I don't want to talk about this radio shit too much. Um, <clears throat> you know what I really am regretting? I'm just really regretting fucking challenging Luke to this race. If you haven't listened to the Luke and Lewis show, uh, Luke used to be a runner and, uh, he won't shut up about it. So I challenged him to a race 30 days down the track, and I reckon I can beat him, but the rules are, I'm allowed to train, so I'm in a rigorous training regime for the next 30 days, and Luke is not allowed to, cha to train, and fucking hell, I've been smashing it, I've been going to gym, like, three times a week, and then also trying to run five days a week, <laughs> so it's like eight days of training into a seven-day week, and it's just fucked me, I mean, it's good, uh, I've never run before, you know what gets me about running is, uh, it's, I actually quite enjoy it. I didn't think that I would like it, but I don't mind it. But um, I've been getting, like, doms in my legs in places I never have before. Like, the inside of my thighs. I'm getting these weird-ass fucking doms. I can't, I can't get off the toilet. I sit down to, use, to take a shit, and I just can't get off the fucking toilet. I'm like, oh, my God. But I'm hoping that by the end of the 30 days, I am going to beat him in this race. But I do think it is going to fuck up my weight gain stuff. I mean, I've been steadily putting on weight. I'm about 78 kilos now. Sorry I haven't been posting in the podcast group every week with my weigh-in stuff, but I kind of quickly realized that that was just a kind of an unfunny idea. Um, so I will keep you updated at the end of this month of what I'm doing. I'm just not going to do it every week because, I don't know, I just don't really want to film me getting on the scales in the morning and I got to get to fucking work now. So um, I just don't have the time to do that shit, but I'll do it at the end of the month and I'll keep you, all of you guys updated with my progress. But uh, speaking of, I'll, I'll let you know my, my weightlifting stats. So you cunts can all compare with me and call me a skinny cunt. Um, <clears throat> where are we? So where are my stats? I wrote them, been writing them down. All right. So I'll give you a comparison here. My first week at the gym, I weighed 72 kilos. I squat 75, I bench 60, shoulder pressed 30, and cleaned 40. These are kilos, this is including the bar, right? Uh, now, I weigh 78, I'm squatting uh, 87, benching 60 still, haven't really moved much on the fucking bench. Uh, I'm still shoulder pressing 30, I'm cleaning 40, and I'm deadlifting 85. And I want to get that up to 100 by the end of the month, because deadlift is probably my best lift. It's just stalling a bit at the moment, because I don't want to fuck my back while I get back into it. Dude, did you hear about that kid who fucking killed himself at the gym? How crazy is that? If you don't know, this 15-year-old kid went to the gym by himself. He tried to bench 100 kilos, and he just literally ended up killing himself. That's fucking so sad, man. You, can't, you need to know what you're doing when you go to the gym, or you need to have a partner with you. If, if you're listening to this, guys, and you go to the gym, go to the gym by yourself. That's fine, but never ever attempt like personal best lifts without a spotter or the safety bars rigged up because 
you can really fucking hurt yourself. And it happens all the time of people being like, oh, I did 95 two days ago. I could probably do 100 today. And then they don't realize that they're fatigued from their max two days ago. And then they end up killing themselves, which is what this kid did. And 100 kilos, that's so... That's so fucking heavy, man. 100 kilo dead bench press. I'm not even deadlifting that much. And that's some really sad news. I know there's nothing funny to say about that, guys. I just wanted to say just, just a little... Uh, just a little health tip from half a personal training degree, Lewis Spears here. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I read news like that, the personal trainer within me just goes, oh man, I wish I was there to spot that kid, teach him some good form and some gym ethic. Yeah, never do personal lift maxes without a spot or the safety bar set up because you can really fucking hurt yourself. I remember I almost, I did that once. Um, I was going for a squat personal best and my gym didn't have like a squat rack. They had, they they had a rack to put the barbell on, but they didn't have anything to catch it if you went too low or if you dropped it or anything like that. And uh, I was doing, I was doing something crazy. This is when I was really good at lifting. I think I was squatting like ninety, and then I went up to ninety five, and I got down, and I realized I'm not getting back up. So. I squat all the way down. I went way too far down. It started to hurt my hips. I was like, fuck, if I go any further than this, I'm going to pull something and really hurt my back. So I just, and this was like, this was at 11 p.m. at night too. So nobody else was there. I had keys to the gym because I worked there. It wasn't like one of those 24 hour ones. It was just a little personal training studio. Went there myself and I just leant back and let it fucking hit the floor the, the barbell went through the carpet. I ripped up the fucking carpet, hit the ground. Luckily, I was totally fine because I was falling backwards and I just kind of rolled. Lucky it wasn't a bench press or anything that would have landed on my neck. But yeah, I fucked up the carpet. And uh, what I ended up doing was just, I was totally fine, but it scared the shit out of me. I never did a personal best without a spotter after that again. Um, I ended up just putting some weights on top of the hole in the carpet and then the next day I came to work and the boss is like, Hey, Lewis, uh, did you come in and do any training last night? And I was like, last night? She goes, yeah. Uh, no, why? And she's like, oh, I think the cleaners have put a hole in the carpet. <laughs> and she never fucking knew it was me. You know, what? I think she knew it was me. But she just didn't have enough evidence. So she just fucking let it go. But uh, I, my apologies... I did put that hole in your carpet. I think that gym's closed now, so fuck them. They're never getting my money. Um, but yeah, if you ever do a personal best, please have a spotter or at least the fucking safety bars because you don't need any more 15-year-old kids getting crushed by their bench press anymore. Oh, dude, do you want to hear the dumbest fucking comment I've, I've got this month? Well, it'd be the dumbest in the last two months for sure. Because as you guys know, I don't get angry at hate comments. Like if someone's like, you're shit, or this sucks, or you're not funny, that, I don't, that doesn't bother me at all because that's just an opinion. But it, it's the fucking dumb cunts that get me. Do you know what I mean? It's the people that just say something stupid and they think it's an opinion that really fucking gets me. Or just anything just wrong that they comment... And it's always from people who, who think they're fans, but then they'll just say the dumbest shit. Then it just immediately becomes apparent that they have no idea who the fuck I am or what I do. That really fucking pisses me off, alright? Here's, here's the dumbest comment of the month. Uh, this will probably become a regular segment on the podcast. You know, maybe not every month, but just whenever I see something that makes me so fucking angry that I can't stop thinking about it for three days. Hey, what is this, three days? I got, this happened, this was commented on Friday. It is now Sunday, and I'm still not over it. I've texted Luke about it. I've told my girlfriend about it. Still fucking angry, so now I'm going to tell you, all right? It was on uh, the YouTube uh, upload of the Friday show for Luke and Lewis for lunch. If you haven't checked out, we've got a YouTube channel as well, of a po as, as, well as a podcast. Depending on what you listen to, go subscribe, whatever the fuck. All right, where is it? Okay, here's the comment that just made me flip my shit. I almost quit the radio. I almost flipped a chest, a desk, a chest, a ch desk. Hi, Luke and Lewis. I listened to Spearhead Sundays back when Luke was on it. And it was called another name. Since then, I've grown tired of Spearhead Sundays, but I'm really enjoying this podcast. 
Hope it catches on and we get more. Cheers. Okay, so did you catch the three fucking retarded things in a row that this moron said? Let's go to the first one, all right? No, this was four retarded things. Well, we're probably going to find more in this one paragraph. This is the dumbest fucking thing anyone has ever written in the last two months on my fucking pages. And let me tell you, I get some dumb shit, all right? So, hi, Luke and Lewis. I listened to Spearhead Sundays back when Luke was on it. First dumb thing. Luke was never fucking on Spearhead Sundays. He's been a guest on there, but he has never... It, 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 this was always a solo podcast, all right? I am pretty sure that this fucking spastic is talking about Nothing Inc. Do you remember that podcast? This is the podcast before Spearhead Sundays. That was me, Khaled Colorfella, Elliot Loney. Started before I even knew who Luke was, all right? Luke was never on Nothing Inc. He was never even a guest. Not part of, of Nothing Inc. Not part of Spearhead Sundays. So I'm pretty sure he's confusing my solo podcast that has been running for almost two years with my joint podcast with Khaled and Elliot and not Luke that happened two years ago, all right? So that's the first fucking retarded thing, which really counts as two dumb things. What was the next thing he said, all right? Since then, I've grow, not grown, grow, G-R-O-W, like a fucking tree. What are you, a tree, you dumb cunt? I've grow tired of Spearhead Sundays, all right? There's the second dumb thing he said. Well, the third dumb thing, because he spelled grown wrong. What a fucking spaz, all right? S the third dumb thing he said is, I've grown tired of Spearhead Sundays, all right? Nobody gets tired of this podcast. Everybody just dies when they hear miscellaneous bit at the end too many times in a row, okay? The rest of the podcast is fucking phenomenal. Idiot. I Since then, I've grown tired of Spearhead Sundays, but I'm really enjoying this podcast, all right? 17,000th dumb fucking thing this guy said. Not a podcast. It's a radio show, okay? It's on the radio. At the start of the show, we say, Welcome to Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. If this was a podcast, why the fuck would we say it's a radio show, alright? Hope it catches on and we get more. Oh my god, I can't even fucking... This dumb cunt is so fucking stupid that he actually thinks that this is a podcast and we might make more depending on the fans' response when really this is a fucking radio show and we'll do more because we're getting paid to do more five days a fucking week. I can't deal with how fucking dumb this retard is. I want to ban him from my channel and give him a t-shirt and then rip up the t-shirt in front of him and say, you don't even know who the fuck I am or what I do. Please never comment on my shit. I do not need the input of a fucking video idiot in my YouTube fucking comment section, all right? Cheers. That actually wasn't a bad way to end a comment, all right? I'm over it now, okay? What was that? Fucking three minutes of me reading a paragraph? Oh, I'm not over it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about it with Luke tomorrow, and he's gonna say, can you please stop talking about this? We have a radio show to plan, and I'm gonna say, yeah, that's right, a radio show, not a fucking podcast. What an idiot, right? <sighs> okay, I need to... I should have just paused that there and just listened to some fucking Coldplay and got over it, alright? Yo, you know what I did, uh, uh, when was it? It was last weekend, man. I went to this, uh, Asian restaurant in Chinatown. And I, I believe it's called the Post Mao Cafe. Um, if you haven't, it's in Melbourne, it's right in Chinatown. It's fucking great food and real cheap. I highly recommend it. But... When you go into this cafe, right, it's called the Post Mao Cafe. If you don't know who Mao is, he was a Chinese dictator, right? He was a big communist dictator. <clears throat> he killed more people than Hitler did, all right? I think his death toll was something at 45 million. I googled it, um, and I'll tell you why I googled it in a second. So we go into this Chinese restaurant, and the whole restaurant is Chairman Mao themed. And I'm like, oh, cool, it's like a communist themed cafe. So I call it the communist cafe. It's not really a cafe. It's actually just a, uh, a fucking uh, Chinese authentic restaurant. But I thought communist cafe sounded pretty catchy. So that's how I remember it. And now whenever anybody asks me where it is or what it's called, I, I just say the communist cafe and then they Google it and then they go, Lewis, you're an idiot. And then I go, yeah, I forgot that I gave it a nickname. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the point where it's gotten where I gave it a nickname and then I forgot and now I just that's that's its real name in my head. But whatever the fuck it's called, Post Mail Cafe or whatever bullshit it's called, we went there, right? And the whole place is themed like a communist whatever, and it's, there's pictures of Mao everywhere. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is like an ironic thing, you know, communist cafe. But no, they're fucking serious. Like, they have pictures of this literal homicidal maniac all over the walls, and they have paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs of how good of a leader this guy was. And when I first went in there, I was like, oh, dude, I didn't know there was this this Chairman Mao dude was such a cool guy. I, I didn't know anything about Chinese history. I'm like, oh, Chairman Mao, he must have been a cool dude. There were all of these facts about him, like, helping children and 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 being really charitable and really great to women. And there's, like, classic communist photos of, like, the people looking up in awe at this smiling, chubby Asian cunt, the only overweight dude in the fucking country because communism doesn't work, right? And if you di- if you disagree with me, fucking stop dyeing your hair and get those dumb patches off your denim jacket. You look fucking ridiculous, all right? Get a real job, you communist cunt. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so I Google him. And I find out this guy's literally worse than Hitler. Like, there's a whole bunch of worse than Hitler comments going out uh, on the internet. But this dude is literally quantifiably worse than Hitler. I read this big article by a Chinese historian who focuses on dictators and, and genocides and all that shit. And he's like, yeah, Chairman Mao was way fucking worse than Hitler. This dude killed 45 million people. Uh, you know, he, he mixed genocide with intentional famine. To, white, to weed out a type of Chinese people. And he was just the most evil cunt on the planet. And here we are in Melbourne with some Chinese cafe dedicated to him. And everybody just walks past it and goes, Oh, how quaint. Isn't that nice? I do. Could you imagine if you went to a fucking, I don't know, a German smort, a smorgasbord restaurant and it was called the Adolf Hitler All You Can Eat? <laughs> and they had pictures of fucking Hitler you know, patting his dogs and ruffling the hair of some little Hitler youth and doing a cute little salute with swastikas all over the walls. And then you could get, like, fucking, I don't know, Spetsnaz sausages and uh, Auschwitz Vienna fucking sausages. I don't know what Germans eat. It's like sausages and then another kind of sausage, isn't it? I worked in a fucking butcher and that was Swiss. No, it was Swiss. It wasn't German. Retard. They spoke German, but they were Swiss. I don't know the difference other than their fucking cheese. Um, and they, they don't think the Swiss killed a lot of Jews. I mean, they may have. Probably not as many as Hitler. Like, there would have been a few people who killed Jews in... I mean, it's a whole country, right? Like, there would be a little bit of Jew killing going on. There's a little bit of Jew killing on going everywhere. Whether that whether the whether the murderers know they're Jewish or not, I mean, law of averages, some people getting murdered must be Jewish. Where is this going? This podcast? What am I talking about? Do you ever get into a hole where you just start speaking, and then you're like, dude, how the fuck did I get here? Started off talking about a a Chinatown restaurant, ended up talking about how the Swiss people probably killed Jews, but it's also potentially not a hate crime. Like, well, some of them would be hate crimes, obviously, because, you know, hate crimes are just rampant. But I would, I would, I would say that it's fairly safe to say that most murders are not hate crimes. They're like crimes of passion. Like if your boyfriend cheated on you and then the girl kills him and then he just happens to be Jewish. I mean, that is a Jewish guy getting murdered, but it's not like, you know, a Jewish guy getting murdered for being Jewish. He just shouldn't have cheated on his girlfriend. <laughs> hey, little update. I'm just going to stop talking about this before my fucking show gets cancelled. Um, what am I saying? Oh, yeah. Update on the uh, podcast ads. It looks like it's all ready to go ahead. <clears throat> I just got... Can you hear that? <clears throat> I got a parcel. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking five days a week on the radio, and then I just recorded the mixtape, and now I'm fucking yelling about Jews getting killed. Um... <clears throat> I'm just losing my voice. I need a tea, man. Maybe we should start drinking tea. If anybody has um, uh, some good remedies for... Not remedies, because my voice isn't gone. I'm just worried about losing it. If anybody has some tips on how to retain your voice, like, I don't know, I guess touring musicians 
And touring comedians would have to deal with this a lot. Anyone who talks a lot has to deal with that shit. If you're an annoying cunt and you talk every day and you put your hand up in every university lecture, you know what? If you're a mature age student, <laughs> hit me up because I'm sure you have some remedies for talking too much in fucking class and losing your voice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just email, email me, podcast at loosebeers.com. How do you retain your voice? Is it tea and honey? I'm going to try that. I mean, that sounds like it would help, but I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Do I even like honey? Can't even remember. I'll let you know next episode. What I'm supposed to be talking about is uh, ads on the podcast. Um, uh, companies reached out to me, signed some contracts. We're going to get some ads on the potty. They're totally fine with me swearing and fucking around with the ads. And your boy just got his first promotional product. I'm making it, guys. I got my first promotional product from the... Uh, should I say it? Ah, oh, well... The Dollar Shave Club, alright? They've sent me a bunch of shavers. Shave time, shave money. I'm not going to talk about it now because they're not paying me for it, but I, I will use these, and if, if they suck, you're not going to hear, hear them on my podcast. I'm, I assume they're good. Everyone keeps talking about them. Every podcast fucking advertises them. They must be good. So that, that's, a, that's a potential sponsor. I'll let, I'll let you guys know. If I, do, if I don't like the shavers, I'm not going to fucking advertise them. But if they are good, I'll let you know. I mean, I bet they're, they're, bet they're better than what I'm using at the moment. I'm using those fucking death to the environment Coles home brand shavers that you get in like a value 30 pack from the supermarket. And you can use them once and then you just, then you just have to put them in the bin. And then it ends up, I don't know, chopping up a seahorse because he thinks that it's coral or some shit wraps its tail around it then it just gets decapitated that's when your fucking blunt shavers end up so hopefully these dollar shave club ones are a little bit better than that i mean they're probably still going to end up beheading a seahorse but at least i'll get to use them maybe three times before i send it off to genocide a whole family of seahorses um how's that for an endorsement um <clears throat> so i've got a <clears throat> sorry about this i've got a um I got a Lou review uh, that'll be coming out next week. I know I, I I wanted to get it out last week, but um, fuck man, it was it was it was a lot harder. Well, it wasn't hard. It was just getting into the routine and figuring out a schedule. But now I think the radio stuff is really locked in and really solid. Me and Luke kind of know what we're doing. We have assistance from another guy to do the social media stuff and posting the podcast and edit the video. So basically, while he does that. We write the show and we should finish around 4 p.m. every day after the after the show finishes at 2, then we plan the tomorrow's show. So as long as we can pull that off, I should be able to do videos weekly. Um, but I, all I managed to do last week was film a Lure review and I thought I would have time to edit it. But then typical dumb cunt me forgot my laptop charger and couldn't edit it after one of the shows. And I wasn't going to put it out on a Friday, so... I will be putting that one out on Tuesday, <clears throat> and then from next week, it should be weekly, and I'm going to start the vlog as well. I know I keep saying I'm starting the vlog, but this radio shit has really just come out of nowhere, um, and uh, kind of fuck with my plans a little bit, but I am feeling very, very confident. I mean, I've got this podcast out on time. I thought I would have nothing to talk about, but doing this radio stuff has given me a lot to talk about because I'm actually leaving the fucking house instead of just sitting here staring at the wall being like, man, I should do something. <laughs> <laughs> with my life, but I just can't get motivated in this fucking tiny little one, tiny bedroom that I'm stuck in. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is I really do appreciate the patience that you guys have given me. I mean, really, it's like, I, I feel a little bit shit about not putting out videos on YouTube, but if you think about it, I am, you know, effectively tripling the amount of shit. Well, more than that, really, because we're putting out 40 minutes of extra content every single fucking day now. So I guess if you if you want to be technical about it, I am putting out more content, but I feel like I've been putting out less. I don't know. I'm just trying not to get too hung up on it <clears throat> because it is a new thing that I'm adding in, and every time I add a new thing into the routine that I want to fucking do, it does fuck all the other stuff until I can figure out how to fit it all in without having a fucking sleep apnea over it <laughs> but i am i am working it out uh dude i saw blade runner with my girl last night and that is would have to be one of the coolest and most confusing fucking movies i've ever watched in my life mainly because i have not seen the first one you know when they do that with remakes where they'll remake like literally like a 20 year old movie 
and then they'll start the next one off like, hey, you've probably seen the first one. It's like, can't, no, I haven't, right? If I wanted to watch the first one, I'd have to go and get it on fucking rental on VHS from Blockbuster. I haven't seen the first one. So I haven't seen the first one, so I watched the second one, and I think I grasped like 60% of the plot. Me and Jazz were sitting there kind of filling in the other one <laughs> about the, what the fuck was happening. So she'd be like, who is this guy? And I'd be like, oh, I think he's a robot, but he fucked another robot, and then they had a kid, and this robot thinks that he's the kid, but really he's not the fucking, but he is a robot. And then she's like, so he is a robot? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. All I know is Harrison Ford looks like he's killing it. Did, did, you know, Harrison Ford doesn't really look that old until you see him run. And then you go, oh, you're 70. You're an old man. Like he ran in the, in the movie and it was like, that was like, you look at his face and his face was sprinting. And then his body was like, I need a walker. I don't know how to move this fast anymore. Please stop doing this. You know, his body looked like when you tried to, like, like, a, um, like an animator's first try at making their character run. And it's like, yeah, the arms are moving and the legs are moving and it looks like running, but fuck, it's not smooth. He was running like... like he looked like he was lagging. Like, you, Have you ever played Call of Duty on a shitty internet connection? If you ever watch Harrison Ford or anybody over 70 run, they basically look like you've got only two bars of Wi-Fi. <laughs> and your character's trying to run. And all the characters around him were trying to shoot him, but he kept fucking lagging and jumping all over the screen. They couldn't fucking hit the old cunt. But it was a very good movie. I highly recommend Blade Runner. But see the prequel. Because, man, it was very confusing. And they just... I just hated how they stepped up. Like, all right, you've seen... Uh, the, the the original fucking two days ago. Now it's time to... Now now let's see what happened next. It's like, please do explain that shit to me. I, I was th pretty sure I was like three when that first movie came out. It's like, dude, if you're going to remake something, at least, at least show me a paragraph of text at the start of the movie that it recaps that shit. <clears throat> you know what we should have done? We should have read the Wikipedia article of the first one. I read the Wikipedia article of the first movie after we saw the remake. And I was like, oh, dude, everything makes sense now. Maybe that's what I'll do in future. Instead of seeing the original, I'll just read the fucking... Maybe that's what I'll do instead of seeing movies. I'll just jump on Wikipedia and read the fucking plot. You know I do that? I do do that with horror movies. Like, horror movies that look really interesting, but I can't deal with horror movies because I'm such a fucking girl about it. I just... I don't know. I can see a horror movie and I don't get scared like watching it in the moment. But then when I try and sleep, I just can't fall asleep. I don't even feel. I don't even feel scared. I'm not like freaking out, waiting for a monster to come and get me. I just don't sleep. I just don't get tired. I just sit there and I think about the movie and then I go, "No, I should go to sleep." Yeah, but remember when the fucking demon came out of the box? I'm like, "Yeah, but I should go to sleep." And then that's all that I do for like eight hours, and then I, and then I get up at six thirty in the morning, and I was like, "What a waste of my time." I spent 20 bucks and all I got out of it was like a 7 out of 10 movie experience and insomnia. <laughs> so that's what I do with, with um, horror movies though. I am going to see It, but I'm reading through the book. My girlfriend really wants to see It and I'm like, ah, I'm 20% through the book. At least, me get, at least let me get 60% through the book. Hey, anybody who's read the book and seen the movie, I know that I, I feel like I've from what I've seen online, the movie seems to be half of the book but can you tell me like what chapter of the book does the movie end so that when I get up to that point in the book I can go and see the movie and my girlfriend will stop nagging me and I won't have anything spoiled that'd be great if you do know I mean I don't know if any of you come to read oh, you're all nerds and losers like me of course you read you probably all have fucking Kindles too I gave my old Kindle to my girl and she's actually using it so even though I did spend way too much money on a new one thinking that I had lost it, but I found it, it actually was kind of good because now she can read. Oh, anyone uh, who struggles with reading, try and use a Kindle. My girl used to be able to read books and then thought that she didn't have the attention span for it, but something about a Kindle, you can just read that thing for hours. It doesn't have a backlight. It's really light. And maybe it's because it's kind of like a smartphone that your brain is just like, oh, a smartphone. Because you know when you... 
when you read a book, when I read like a physical book, I just get distracted and I think about other shit that I could do because that's what happens when you're on your phone. Like you open up Facebook and then you get a text and you read the text and you get a Snapchat and it's some girl's tits and then you send her a dick pic and then all of a sudden you're fucking having a wank fest on Snapchat when you should have been reading a fucking, I don't know, textbook for university. You know that shit? It's just too distracting. But I feel like something about a Kindle, because your brain's like, oh, it's technology, I can pay attention to this, because we do that every day. But there's no notifications, and there's no backlit screen, it's just the fucking book. I don't know, I find that I can really get lost in it, um, like, in a way that I can't with my book. And my girlfriend has, I thought I was weird, but my girlfriend said the same thing. So, I don't know, if you struggle with reading, get a Kindle, they're like 100 bucks. Kindle endorsements brought to you by Spearhead Sundays. Use code... Um, use code GIRLS for cheaper 10% off uh, Amazon. Yeah, whatever the fuck. Hit me up with... I don't know. What am I saying today? It's 9 o'clock on Sunday. Sorry this one is late. I'm a little bit fucking tired. But um, I don't know. I, I, just, I was just like, you know what? I missed a video. I'm not missing this fucking podcast. So, shall we get into the worst part of the fucking podcast, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Let me get up the emails because as usual, I don't fucking have them. Um, what are we doing? All right, so I got this email from someone called Cameron and the subject line is help me give you money in all caps. I can't remember if this was actually in all caps or I wrote it in my notes in all caps so that I would remember that it's the subject line. Either way, I've nailed remembering that it's the subject line, but I can't remember if this was in all caps or not. Probably wasn't. No one's that excited about giving me money. Um, hey, cunt, I'm Cameron. I live on the Gold Coast. Poor you. Feel sorry for you, man. Hate the Gold Coast. Love the people. Love performing. Hate being there. Although I was only near the tourist place. Everybody told me that none of the locals go there. Maybe next time I'll try and stay out of that fucking hellhole. It's like a war zone. King hit city. I live on the Gold Coast. I'm 15 and have been watching you for over a year now and I love your online work. Thank you very much, Cameron. Keep it up. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're cool. I say online work as I haven't yet seen you live on tour. <clears throat> My parents sort of have a strict rule on swearing so they have no idea I'm watching you. That fucking sucks, man. And they're, and they're just clueless to how the world works. Like, you really think you can stop a 15-year-old boy from seeing swearing. That guy has already seen anal double penetration videos on Pornhub, all right? He's definitely fucking swearing, and that is the least of your worries. He has the internet. He's watching gangbangs, all right? That's how it works. Um, I doubt my parents would approve of your type of comedy. The same comedy I find fucking hilarious. Thank you very much. I really want to see you live as you always talk up your shows, and I don't know how to ask them to see your show when you do come to the Gold Coast next. Hopefully I can see your show soon. Have a shit one. Um, look, two ways you can play this, Cameron. All right? There's two different ways you can go about this. One, you can go the shifty way, where you show them one of my more PC videos. A really good... PC parent friendly video to show your parents if you want to convince them to see my show is if the Herald Sun was a person. I'm pretty sure I don't even swear at all in that video. It's also about the Herald Sun. It's a nice little two minute video, family friendly fun for the whole fucking crew. And then you take them to my show and I'll come on stage and start joking about the dream world accident. All right. And then what, by the time you're in there, you're fucking strapped in, your parents aren't going to leave. And then maybe they'll let you go next year when you're 17. Cause you'll be 16 by the time I come back to Gold Coast in around September is when I think I'm going to tour next year. Um, so that's how, that's one way you can do it. Or the other way you can do it, uh, is how I would do it, is just lie, man. Surely you can go out at night. Oh. Surely you can go and say to your parents, hey, uh, I'm seeing a movie with, I don't know who your mates are, if you have any. You're one of my fans, so you probably don't have many. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking uh, Daryl and Jane. All right, I want to go to see the movies with Daryl and Jane. What are you seeing? Captain Underpants, because Kevin Hart's in it and there's no swearing, right? Didn't that guy cheat on his wife? Hey, it's irrelevant. Captain Underpants, family-friendly fun, even though I'm cheating on my pregnant wife, all right? So 
just do that. Say I'm going to see a movie in the city and then just fucking come and see me. And then when they come home, how was the movie? You go, ah, look, it was all right. But then you, in your head, you're like, oh, fucking remember when he said cunt? That was pretty cool. Just do that. I, I would just lie. Either way, I mean, it's lying. If your parents have to come with you, show them the Herald Sun video and convince them to come with you. And then by then you'll be in there and you can feign ignorance and say, oh, I didn't know he was going to be like that. And then, you know, by the time I come around next year, you'll be 18 and they can't really do anything about it. <clears throat> um, or just lie and say you're seeing a movie and come and see me. Really, you know, if they come and see the show... Unless they're crazy about swearing, they'll probably enjoy it. Like, it's proper comedy. Also, I don't know, 15, you might be too young, man. Um, but come and see me. You'll figure it out, all right? Next email. Hey, cunt, for the purposes of, purposes of this, call me Adam. All right, you're the boss, Adam. All right, so I'm 18. First year of uni. Oh, I forgot to read the fucking subject line. What was this one? It was a good one. Uh, oh, here we go. I'm in love with someone who is not my girlfriend. So straight away, fucking banger email. For the purpose of this, call me Adam. I am 18, first year of uni, and I've been dating this girl for two and a half years. Let's call her Abby. All right, Adam and Abby. We met in year eight and dated briefly before breaking up and then started dating again in year 11. For the majority of the relationship, everything has been pretty good. A few minor bumps in the road, but nothing too big. That was until she moved away for uni. Here we fucking go. Who's cheating on who? Who wants to suck someone else's dick? Who wants to fucking finger a slut at a university party? It's you, mate. Want to cheat on his girlfriend. And he's thinking about maybe she's already cheating on me. So maybe I could do it behind her back. But then I don't want to hurt her feelings because she's my high school girlfriend. But what if she's getting railed by some cunts? She's my high school girlfriend. But I really want to fuck that slut in my uni class. High school girlfriend. Maybe she's being DP'd by two black dudes. High school girlfriend. Man, I really want to fuck my lecturer. All right. Um, she is only... <laughs> she's only... An hour and a half away. Can someone make a fucking backing track for that, please? That'll, that'll be a banger. I'll put that shit on iTunes. Um, she's only an hour and a half away, but seeing as I'm a poor cunt and can't afford a bus to get to her and I can't drive because I'm, a, I'm deficient as fuck, join the club. I can only see her when she comes back to town. This was working relatively well for the first half of the year, but sometimes it was really hard. We used to call each other a lot and would talk every day, but then assignments and shit got in the way and we rarely talk anymore. I should mention here that I suffer from anxiety and, and depression, and the disconnect I feel sometimes has led me to have suicidal thoughts. I also find it very difficult to start conversations stemming from my anxiety. Okay, let me modify the track. High school girlfriend. I really want to fuck that slut in my uni class. High school girlfriend. Or maybe I'll just stay home and kill myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Don't do that. That's fucking awful. Um, let's get into this email. Uh, fucking. Yeah, dude, depression is serious. Now I feel kind of bad, but you know. Also a bit of a tune. Uh, you can't deny that. Anyway, I started talking to this other girl. Let's call her Nicole, who I knew from a few things I'd done around town. What does that mean? Who I knew from a, a few things you've done around town. What are you, some kind of drug dealer? Uh, and we became really good friends. Please note, I'm the kind of guy who deliberately friend zones himself in order to stop any awkward interactions later on. Yeah, sure. No, oh, no, she didn't friend zone me. I fucking friend zone myself, man. I just, I don't want to fuck girls. Um, no, you're good. You, you're staying faithful. I believe you, man. It's a fucking good thing to do. Um, and while I think this may have worked, there is a problem. I've fallen for this girl. So you friend zone yourself and then fallen in love with her. So you fucking double checkmated yourself. Um, we've been talking for a couple of months and it's only been normal, friendly conversations, but it's something that I've been missing in my actual relationship. And it's gotten to the point where I don't know what the fuck I'm meant to do because I really like this girl, but does she like you? I was having a conversation one day with Nicole and she asked me why I'd been so distant in the days prior to our conversation. And I spent about 30 minutes changing the subject and avoiding the question because I knew I couldn't tell someone that isn't my girlfriend that I have feelings for them. 
But after about half an hour, I just broke down and started to let everything out. I told her that I liked her and I was confused because I didn't know what to do because I love Abby. But also, I have really strong feelings towards Nicole. Well, good on you for being honest, man. After this, I panicked upon realizing what I'd said to her and went offline and had an anxiety attack. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of a hard fucking scenario. I would never cheat on my girlfriend because I would never be able to forgive myself and I don't know what to do. I've considered breaking up with my girlfriend and then staying single until I can figure out how to be happy by myself and also telling Nicole that we can't be friends anymore because it's fucking with my relationship. But Nicole also makes me really happy. I also don't want to break up with Abby because I still love her. Uh, also, Abby and I are in a band together, so us breaking up would destroy my only source of income. Fuck, you're actually making money out of a band? Shit, man. It's like winning the lottery. Sorry there's no throwing up on dicks in this story, but I really do need help. Also, I saw you in Brisbane this year, and it was the best night of my life. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Cheers, can't Have a shit one. Um, fuck, man. This is a hard one, because... The band thing really does... You're making money out of a band? How? I don't know. I never understood how bands make money. Because, like, someone like me... I'm, I'm just barely getting by. Like, I live in my parents' house and I'm just barely getting by on the money that I make from touring. I'm a touring comedian. And I have the YouTube thing and Patreon and I'm just barely fucking like making money I'm like I'm, I'm like on minimum wage stats I pay myself $300 a week like that's fucking nothing but then I'm like dude if you were as successful as me but you were a band even with like the money that you would make from songs and streaming and the kind of shit that I can't get money out of at, you know because it's music you still have to split that with like minimum three people and I don't understand how the fuck any band can live off that shit, especially if you then have a, a, a recording deal and an agent, you know? I don't know. I, I don't know. If, if you are really making money, fucking good on you, man. You must be a good band. <clears throat> Look, this is a hard one, dude. Obviously, you sound very unhappy at the moment, and uh, you don't want to fuck around with your mental health because it's something that you clearly deal with. I mean, depression and anxiety, it's a fucking, it's a bitch, man. Um, and if this relationship stuff is making you worse, dude, honestly, if this, this you're so young, like this long distance stuff is so difficult, and especially because you're a loser like me that doesn't drive, and you got no money as well, and you can't really see this girl, maybe you should really reevaluate if this girlfriend is worth it. Because, at, look, at the end of the day, neither of these girls are going to make you happy. Neither of these girls are worth fucking lamenting over like you have been. So maybe you are right. Maybe you should just get rid of your girlfriend and I, I don't think I would necessarily cut this chick out of your life unless you, unless you realize the issue is you're actually just not happy by yourself. That's probably something where you should cut both girls out and focus on yourself and figure that shit out. But um, it, I, I think at, at the very least, it sounds like this relationship is not for you, man. I would probably cut out the girlfriend because the long distance thing is clearly fucking with your head and you need some real life interaction. And you know what? She might be feeling the same way too, man. Like, you don't know that, but she might be. I, I would uh, I would maybe have a talk with your girlfriend and be like, hey, where is this going? Do you see this going forever? Because it's not just a uni thing, right? Let's say minimum both of you are in uni for four years. Do you see yourself holding on to this relationship for four years? And then after those four years, are you and her going to buy a house together and work in whatever careers and fields you have because that's kind of like the next well not buy a house but move in together because that's really the only option that you have unless you want to continue the long distance relationship for fucking ever because she gets a job over here and you get a job over there so that's really what I would consider is, hey, if I want to keep this girl around, do I also want to keep the long distance relationship running for four years and then move in with her? Because I don't see any other way that that would resolve after you guys finish uni. Because obviously you would want to move out. 
but you wouldn't want to stay in your parents' place and you wouldn't really want to get roommates, so you'd probably end up moving in together. And is that a good idea when you've been long distance for so long? What if you get into the same house and your routines hate each other? Do you know what I mean, man? Like, I, I, it's, a, it's a big, like, long-term life plan thing. Maybe the girlfriend isn't for you if you're having these feelings already, hasn't been that long. And you are so young that both of these girls ultimately will probably be, just be a blip in your long life of girls. Um, so I would say, maybe consider getting rid of the current girlfriend and then figure out what you're going to do with the other girl because... Maybe that's the reason why you're so upset with your own life is because your girlfriend is stressing you the fuck out and you and you don't feel all right. Maybe once you get rid of her and you have a little time to sit down by yourself and be alone, you're like, oh, fuck, that was that massive thing that was giving me anxiety, whether or not I actually wanted to be with my fucking girlfriend long distance for four years or not. So that's what I would, I would recommend, man, is have a serious talk with your girlfriend, figure out if she's feeling the same things and what she thinks, and uh, maybe break up with her if it looks like, you know, the problem isn't going to be resolved. That's what I would say. All right. So that's my fucking answer. That's the end of the podcast. I will talk to you next Sunday. Please do tune into the Luke and Lewis radio show uh, if you can. Um, because Well, ratings don't really matter, but it'd be cool to have a lot of podcast um, subscribers and listeners and all that kind of shit. Like listening live doesn't really matter, but please do check out the podcast, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, just search Luke and Lewis on iTunes or YouTube. And we're on Facebook and Instagram too. We're posting videos and shit. And I think they're quite funny. And um, it'd be really good at the end of the month when the bosses are like, all right, are we going to give them, are we going to move them to fucking regional radio in Tasmania? Or will we give them a real show in Melbourne or Sydney? We can, you know, at the end of the month, we can be like, hey, look what we did with no money, no budget in a shitty time slot. You should give us something good. So, you know, that's what we're really trying to do is get a, a good place after this month of radio. All right. So thank you very much for listening to Spear Sunday's podcast. I've been Lewis Spears. If you would like to support what I do, please do check me out on Patreon uh, and you get access to all of the podcast episodes and videos early from now on because I'm in now back into a routine. I'm going to record the podcast on Thursdays. Um, yeah, probably Thursdays because not Fridays. Fridays I want to leave early. So Thursdays, I'm hoping, is when I'm going to record the podcast from now on. And if you want to hear it on Thursdays instead of Sundays, you know, chuck a couple bucks in Patreon. It doesn't matter how much you give a month. If you, if you give like fucking $2 a month, you get early access to everything. All right? So that's the end of the podcast. Um, please do give me a rating on iTunes and rate the Luke and Lewis fucking show on iTunes and uh, I'll talk to you next Sunday. And, uh, oh, just before I go, I uh, really, really do hope that each and every one of you have a incredibly, fantastically shit one.